Hi, my name's Aaron, and uh, I'm going to talk about a short story of my experiences of putting Home Assistant inside of our off-grid vehicle. Uh, that's my presentation today. So uh, this is put into two pieces. The first one, is, first part is putting everything into place, and the second is actually implementing Home Assistant. And there's a bit of a story to show where this starts at, because I literally had to build this home from nothing at all. It was uh, uh, used to be a school bus, and uh, we'll talk about that here. Uh, I'm from Seattle, Washington, but right now I live in Mississippi. Uh, uh, my day job, I'm just an IT nerd. I do consulting right now and work from home. Uh, I've had a lot of hobbies in the past that dealt with large uh, vehicles and welding and home remodeling and all sorts of stuff. I've always thought about how integrated systems and stuff work in there. Uh, new hobbies include kids, we have four kids, and uh, so in 2014, we bought a uh, whole school bus that was uh, just literally un unmodified and started working on it. Uh, we wanted to try to reduce the amount of clutter and things in our life and see sort of uh, what we wanted to, you know, what that would turn into um, without knowing actually what was going to happen. So what we did is we, took that bus and and sort of waved a magic wand. One thing led to another, and four years later, we have a off-grid vehicle. Uh, basically, it's got solar panels on the roof, it's got a gigantic lithium battery for storage, it's got air conditioning, internet, blah, 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 store, you know, sleeping for four people, four kids, two adults, the whole nine yards. There's uh, some links there if you, wanna, if you wanna see what's going on. Um, that really started, to uh, that process of building that uh, was one that wasn't really that well planned. Um, I, of course, designed the systems to intricate detail and obsessed it over those a lot, but automation and controlling them all, I was kind of like, eh, I'll have some buttons to push. I'll look at the RV industry. There's just lots of control panels. I'll just want to get something done and make it work. So I really concentrated on all of the physical physicality of this vehicle. Um, you know, I thought, well, I'll just pick items and devices that sound good. So I'll be honest, I started reading Home Assistant reviews and how well does this integration, how well does that integration work and started choosing items based on that. So I, I tried to make the, I decided, I just deferred it. I was like, I'll figure out, make the smarts go later. Um, this did lead to some conflicts with how things were supposed to work. Um, but it was, you know, it was resolved. I just sort of, I, I made it work. Um, the criteria for selecting a, a automation and things were, I needed to look and see what I could automate and who built these things. Um, when I first started investigating this, I saw a lot of integrated packages for RVs, but you couldn't actually buy them because dealers wouldn't let you get them. You had to be licensed to use them. Um, and then I also connected this with what can you automate? Basically anything that's uh, powered and is a convenience of some kind. Um, what I ended up coming up with was having the core systems built by Victron Energy. This is all of the power systems. This turned out to be the monitoring, the, the solar collection, the charging controls, and all of these uh, devices have a lot of inter interconnected networks, uh, CAN bus, proprietary, semi-proprietary networks, plus ethernet, plus all sorts of stuff. The really, the clincher though, is that they update all of their information up to a system called VRM. Uh, it's a cloud, free cloud-based tool. And uh, VRM really helped enable connecting all of these different things together. Uh, you know, you can see the installation here of, of all the devices, all the integration, lots of things that got built. And a lot of this was built before Home Assistant really even came into the plan here. So what does that mean as far as how do you get to the point? Uh, idle hands. I really started out working with Home Assistant, uh, trying to just connect briefly to small things, install it on a Raspberry Pi like we all, a lot of us have done. And it was okay. I was kind of like, yeah, I, that's cool. So I got, the, I got the weather for somewhere in Norway, I think. Um, I didn't really consider all this too much yet. Um, what I did do though, is started playing with what can I add this for information? One of the very first things I was able to add was resistive sensors that communicated over, uh, I can't remember, it was some 
integration that kind of just plugged it in and worked. I started messing with stuff. Um, I got some good weather. I got some good information about my location. I had a previous panel uh, that was dedicated up inside the bus to be able to put it up there and I kind of shoved it up there. Um, but then with MQTT and trying to figure this out, this is where it really started to shine. And I want to say that Home Assistant was also a bit of a platform for learning for me. Uh, I didn't really know MQTT existed before this. I went on some suggestions of other smart people that I chat with um, and found out that Victron, when you want to communicate with their devices, you have to do Keep Alive, another common thing in MQTT. And once that happened, I had thousands of items that populated in my MQTT tree because I subscribed to all of them. I was like, this is amazing. And so I just was like kid in the candy store, just trying to play with everything. Um, all of these different items, batteries, storage, uh, stores, like liquid levels to, to solar intake, to power output, to all sorts of things happen. Position, location, you name it, it's in there. Um, this made it to where I started harvesting a lot of, uh, in, I, I needed to start collecting this. So I was like, well, this isn't gonna get stored on a, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna set the, the little uh, micro SD card on fire inside of the Raspberry Pi. So the progression of how do I put this on an S, SSD drive and, and sort of trying to make it uh, self-contained in a way that I could not worry about it all the time. Is it gonna break tomorrow? Um, with the eventual goal of building this in such a way that I don't have to, play with it all the time. I wanted to get it to a point that was stable and facilitate that in, in let my family work with things. So, you know, bought an enclosure, tried to put it together in a way that would run off of something reliably in boot. Um, the, the idea though, was that I had to figure out all of these pieces at the time, because this is a little, this is a little while ago, um, and started trying to manage the configuration for it, it was already getting complicated. Um, however, I was getting really compli I was getting really fantastic results. Um, the but I was fine. I was fighting with like the installer. I don't know if it was depreciated or not. You know, there's there's different ways to install this, especially with the SSD implementation. Um, basically, what it turned into is I got a lot of really cool results here. You can see in this little screen grab of things here. Uh, I can control my water faucets to shore power inlet to turning my heaters on and off and air conditioning and all the good stuff. But this is all managed through basically a control panel interface here. And this is then presented for my family to use it. Uh, the, the node red graph in the corner was to be the uh, automate myself, automate dad to turn the thermostat back down when the kids turn it back up this way because there's only so much power you can have in a solar powered bus on a daily basis for cooling or heating, uh, those types of things. So basically, after iteratively adding a bunch of stuff over and over and over again, um, I really started to get the user interface knocked down to a, a, a way that made sense. It was actually A-B testing on a daily basis with the family. So they'd come up and push stuff and it would be different. And they'd go, Dad, what's, what is this? And I said, yeah, maybe you shouldn't push that. And then I'd go back and work on the computer and change it. So they can't change some critical system um, through the control panel or something like that, because the system actually does affect physical devices that could be important to have like the water turning on and off um, or dumping the tanks or things like that. Um, I found that after getting Home Assistant up to a point to where it was relatively static, uh, my kids started be playing with the interface a lot more. They would watch it because when we need to do laundry, remember we're living full time. We don't go back to a house. We don't plug into an RV pad or anything. We're either living in the desert or at a friend's uh, yard or just on the road or at a beach or whatever we are. And um, basically we had to be fully self-sustained. And that meant if you do a load of laundry, you can do three or four loads of laundry with the power reserves that you've got, with the amount of water you've got. And so Hass was able to help me and the kids and my wife find where, uh, what, are we low on water? Can we time the showers? Because that is often a, a really challenging thing to do when you're living full time with only 100 gallons of fresh water. So we are, our actual water consumption was very, very low. And this helped control all that and, and really keep an eye on all that stuff. Um, it was pretty fantastic being able to watch the kids progress through not interested to seeing how this is all connected. 
um, watching when they turn the air conditioning on and having it cool off, but seeing the battery and the power and everything else and ask questions because we homeschool our kids. This all spiraled into all sorts of teaching uh, opportunities in that space too. So this is yet again, more teaching opportunities. It's been really astounding to have that. Um, there's just a lot of details that are in here. So uh, for example, the location sharing that was shown in the previous talk, I have to modify it. So our, up, our location's updating all the time. So there's GPS that's being pushed in via GPSD. Uh, that feeds all sorts of actions like solar uh, angle and power usage and when the heater should turn on and all sorts of stuff to, to anticipate for that. Um, I use the ubiquity controller for managing the network to be able to make it so the kids can focus on school things during the day. Uh, a crazy PowerShell Docker container that I sort of fit into this thing to to load in and talk to a lithium battery battery management system. Um, I started adding the, the lighting. All the vehicle lighting now internally was driven via Shelly's. Uh, I subscribed to Nabucasa because it's amazing for five bucks, gets you that reverse nap punch to be able to, to control the thing remotely. It's just really been a great experience. And there's so many other things in there. Um, so, you know, this is just a kind of a picture. I know you can scrutinize this. We'll probably have the slides afterwards, but there's, it's been a journey that the, this home assistant has traveled a lot, uh, 20,000 miles of road time probably. Uh, and 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 a couple a year or so or more, it's been really fantastic having home assistant as an actual assistant in our day to day uh, journeys and living. So after that, uh, COVID happened. So we sort of settled down a bit at our friend's place in Oregon, uh, United States. Uh, we then lived there for the summer, enjoyed the summer had a lot of hobbies and things to, to practice on, but eventually we did find another house. Um, that's where I'm in, in Mississippi now. Um, we basically had uh, uh, put the bus in storage for now. Uh, we're not getting rid of it. We're just sort of pausing it. It's our home base for now. And we're able to uh, uh, sort of take a, a breather from constant moving. Um, home Assistant now helps me monitor it uh, remotely so I can control the, the, the heating and cooling of it when it's in storage. If it's below freezing, you can turn the heaters on and just check it. It does automate it, but you know, just double check so you want it to freeze. And presumably in the summertime, I can run that air conditioning to keep things uh, within the comfort envelope for things. Uh, I recently did an update for HA, the containers, and broke it. So that's on me. Oops. Um, what it was was a realization that I built a really complex system and uh, I need to try to figure out how to build this in a more scalable fashion. I still have foundational access to all the controls via Victron VRM though. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, it's it's sitting on my desk right there and uh, or on my shelf and I'm, I'm planning on rebuilding that again. So uh, that's, you know, I, I think that this is gonna be an even better version and this is a learning curve for me um, I'm hoping that I can, as, as I can be more dedicated to this, that I can maybe contribute back to the community a little bit with my thoughts and ideas and put on our blog and whatever else we can do to try to, to, to message how to do this in a more complicated fashion. Um, so I think things that I've learned is Home Assistant is extremely flexible. It's, it is a, it is a all wonder multi-tool that lets you do anything. Um, MQTT was really an opening to my eyes of, of how intelligently built that, that uh, process, that protocol and, and method is. Um, it's exciting to watch all the devices and things go in there. Um, having said that, I think it's also important to consider what you're putting in MQTT. In my situation, there are certain things that I could have wired together that also could have set the vehicle on fire. Um, for example, if I had decided to make battery management uh, controller access to that, I'd be able to turn the batteries up in such a way that would break things or maybe uh, have the heaters have problems. There's there's concerns. So I think uh, keeping it, I for me, it was keeping uh, them separate. So if things go sideways, you can fix it. And then um, that's that's basically it. So I just wanted to say thank you and uh, this has been really a great journey and thanks to Home Assistant team for enabling our journey. Um, I have open for questions if you want.
So thanks.